Hello, class. Assalamu alaikum. Good morning. Hope everybody will be listening me. Good morning, class. Hope everyone will listen me. Good morning, Mahad. How are you? Okay, let's start. Yes, Ushna, how are you? Walikum assalam. How are you, beta? Fine, good. Okay, let's start with our class because we have only 40 minutes today. And uh, Shanti Kumari, Ushna, everyone, Walikum assalam, Shanti, and uh, everyone. Okay, let's start with our class. So, today our topic. Today, our topic in the chapter, what is science? We will be studying. Up till now, class, we have learned. Uh, up till now, we have learned in this chapter, what is science? About the meaning of science, importance of science, what is technology, how it is important in our life and how we are taking advantages or making right use of technology, what are the misuses of technology and uh, about the contribution of Muslim scientists, about uh, the general safety rules in the laboratory, that what are the rules we need to follow to make sure our safety and proper handling of the uh, experiment or laboratory apparatus and also we have learned about uh, the um, scientific methods that the scientists used in the laboratory or for studying any sign scientific process to carry out the investigation here is your book new lower secondary science book one and i hope everyone is reading the book or the chapter uh, on alternate days or uh, whenever we have class you people must be going through the pages up till now we have learned from page number one till page number seven today in this book we will learn from page number eight till page number eleven and then this chapter will be finished today and from the next week, we will start the new chapter that is mass, density, and temperature. That is the second chapter in your syllabus. So uh, here on the screen, you can see uh, that what we have learned in the last class, we have learned the scientific method of investigation or a study. This is just for your recap so that you will uh, revise what we have learned or recall what we have learned in the last class. General safety rules to follow in the laboratory contribution of Muslim scientists, right? So uh, just a minute, let me disable the annotate. Okay, now what are the learning objectives for the today's chapter, today's lesson? Today we will learn about the hazardous substance, hazardous substances and the common laboratory apparatus and their uses. Uh, somebody has unmuted himself, please turn off your mic beta turn off your mic okay good so class uh, in this chapter in this lesson today we will learn about the hazardous substances hazardous substances as you can see here let me use the spotlight that what are the hazardous substances as you can see on the screen here in this picture that there is a sign of a uh, triangle in which there is a sign of exclamation. This sign shows the danger. You have you have uh, seen this sign at the back of the uh, uh, flame uh, at the back of the truck uh, which carries flammable substances, tankers which carries petrol, oil or something else like that or uh, uh, at some places as well we have seen this sign. So many times this sign shows this sign of exclamation in the triangle shows the danger and this is the sign of hazardous substances we will learn about their ties and the examples one by one and second topic today we are uh, going to learn about the common laboratory apparatus and their uses so Now, what are the hazardous substances? 
hazardous substances are substances that cause that can cause adverse health effect here you on the screen you can see chemical hazards they in this picture they have seen they have shown us the chemical hazards reactives toxins flammables corrosive these are the four different types of chemical hazards besides these there are some biological hazards as well which are dangerous for us we will learn about them one by one first we will discuss that what are the hazardous substances so these are the substances which can cause adverse health effect means dangerous health effect on uh, means uh, they uh, have a way, very dangerous effect on our body or on our health such as poisoning breathing Uh, problems skin rashes allergic reactions allergic sensitization cancer and other health problems from exposure so hazardous substances can include biological agents means uh, here on the screen you can see the chemical hazards now we will uh, study that what are the biological hazards biological agent uh, biological agents or bi biological hazards include uh, microorganisms we learned in the last class that all those unicellular organisms which are made up of just one cell they can be seen only by microscope not by our naked eye so they include fungi bacteria viruses natural substances means uh, in our environment uh, or at our homes or at, in our school what are the natural substances that we can use such as grain Uh, grain of uh, the crops that we eat uh, at times they get rotted or uh, they are unhealthy for our body due to the uh, pesticides or due to different reasons flour flour uh, the that uh, the flour that we wheat flour that we use for making our bread or enzyme dust substances generated at work such as uh, means in the offices or in the factories uh, people those who work in factories they are the uh, uh, most like victims of chemical or other hazards such as soldering or welding fume i believe everyone everyone of you have seen uh, the process of welding that how the mechanics or uh, or uh, technicians they uh, weld different metallic pieces to join them together so soldering or mechanical uh, soldering or welding fumes or wood dust when the carpenter works on wood uh, the when he rubs the wood the wood dust it is also very dangerous for our body so chemical products used or produced at work such as adhesive or cleaning agents like uh, we uh, come across so many cleaning agents as well in our school at our workplaces at our homes as well these are the substances such as paint glue cleaning liquid cleaning washing powders uh, grease uh, and uh, like uh, some other uh, bleach bleaching agents these are also the hazardous substances for our body examples of hazardous substances in our houses contain or we can include like uh, drain oven and toilet bowl cleaner general purpose cleaner spot remover disinfectant and deodorizer even the body spray that we use uh, at times people get allergic uh, from the perfumes and the body sprays as well because body sprays or perfumes they contain edta detol detol that we are using nowadays to sanitize our homes and ourselves our um, Uh, uh, like uh, in, in our daily routines we are using uh, the um, hand sanitizers they all contain uh, edta edta is a chemical agent um, which is not very good for our skin and for our uh, respiratory uh, system as well for our windpipe when we inhale the fumes of uh, edta uh, present in detol or in Uh, other substances that we are commonly used in our homes for sanitizing our homes these things they are absorbed by our respiratory system we inhale them these fuel fumes and we get allergic reaction in our 
um, in the, in our windpipe, right? So uh, they they can include uh, the things that we are come uh, that we are coming across at our homes: our spot remover, disinfectant, deodorizer, floor wax, furniture polish, shoe polish, wax, uh, metal polish. We use nail polishes. The ladies that use waste motor oil, antifreeze, brake fluid, solvent, or car batteries, right? So there are so many chemical hazards. Now we will learn the symbols of chemical hazard, hazard hazardous substances. So uh, here on the screen, you can see the symbols. This table is taken from your book on page number eight. It is uh, uh, it is table number one point two, and uh, in this column, there the symbols are given, and in another column, the type of hazardous substances is given. Uh, class for your uh, for the convenience of people, uh, authorities they have assigned different symbols to different types of hazardous substances so that people uh, be alert. When they come across these signs, so that they come to know that uh, what are, what type of hazardous substances is, uh, is present in this uh, area or in this container, for uh, for instance. First one, you can see the symbol of fire. Symbol of fire. It shows that the uh, this is the flammable substance. Flammable substances are those substances which can catch fire easily when we bring them near to naked fire. Examples of the flammable substances are sorry. Examples of the flammable substances are petrol, alcohol, petrol, alcohol. Now this this sign this is the sign for explosive substances. Examples are mixture of hydrogen and air. Now what are explosive substances? These are the reactive substances that contain a great amount of potential energy that can produce an explosion if released suddenly. Means explosive substances, example of uh, it is a mixture of hydrogen and air. If the container burst out, if it released, then it explodes. It burst out. It explodes and uh, it... Uh, um, it means uh, it damages the lives nearby. Next is this hand and the um, some some uh, liquid is dropping from uh, test tubes, and the sign of hand and uh, some sign of wood. This is the corrosive substance. Corrosive substances are examples: strong alkali and acid. Corrosive substances is one that will damage or destroy other substances with which it comes into contact by means of a chemical reaction. Means when they come in contact with our body, they uh, they destroy or damage our skin and they are very harmful for our body as they carry out some kind of chemical reaction which damages our skin. Next is the is, uh, this is the sign of skull and bones, and this symbol is for poisonous or toxic substances. So, what are poisonous or toxic substances? They they are the substances that can cause death, injury, or harm to organs, usually by chemical reaction or other activity. When an organism absorbs a sufficient quantity means uh, when the poisonous or toxic substances come uh, come in comes in contact with us with the human body with uh, with all the living things what they do they uh, immediately leads to death when they come in contact to our body like mercury cyanide chlorine when they immediately comes in contact with our body with the living organism they uh, le it leads to death, injury, or harm to any organ. Right now, next symbol is the sign of cross. This is for irritating or stimulative substances. Examples are chloroform, alcohol, bromine, water. 
so what are radioactive substances uh, sorry uh, irritating substances these they may cause injuries to skin the eyes or airways after a single exposure airways means our respiratory system our windpipe when we inhale them with uh, oxygen or the air that we inhale if they are present in our uh, surrounding air uh, we it uh, enters into our lungs or in our windpipe and they cause injury to our respiratory tract respiratory system or windpipe or to our skin or they also cause allergic reaction in our body different types of allergic reaction every person can uh, show different signs of allergy okay now this symbol this one this shows the radioactive substances now what are radioactive substances a radioactive substance is unstable and produces dangerous kinds of radiation Ra dangerous kind of radiation means the energy dangerous energies it emits when they are open uh, they produce they produce dangerous kind of <laughs> unmute yourself beta unmute why you have unmuted mute yourself everyone so radioactive substances radioactive substances they are they are the uh, substances which emit high amount of energy which are very dangerous for living things like atomic bombing atomic in the atomic bombing uh, the element that is used or the substances that are used are radioactive substances like radioactive carbon uranium plutonium these substances are present in the deadly atomic or uh, nuclear weapons they emit la large amount of uh, deadly energies which are very harmful for our body they absorb by our skin or by our mouth or nose and they uh, instantly lead to death at times for medical treatment a very small amount of energy radioactive energy is being used to treat the patient uh, like x-ray x-ray uh, x-rays uh, people you must be aware of uh, how the x-ray is being taken uh, for patients uh, it is through machine x-ray machines and it is through uh, x-ray machines and it is for uh, treating or diagnosing the disease ct scan ultraviolet rays of sun as well is contains the radioactive substance so uh, ultraviolet rays of sun also uh, is also harmful for our body now next that we are going to learn here on the screen Plus, uh, just a minute. Uh, just raise your hands if you have, uh, if you are listening me properly. Raise your hands, everyone. If you listen me properly, yes. So that I come to know that uh, the internet, there is no internet issue, and everyone listens to me. Arham, Mir Arham Ali, Arham Ali Seven B. Why are you here, Mir Arham Ali? Why are you here, beta? It should be for uh, Aban. I believe uh, Aban is here with your ID. If this is so, please confirm it in the chat window. Right. Okay, fine. So uh, on the screen, you can see. Yes. Okay, thank you. Now lower down, lower down your hands. Okay, thank you. So, examples of hazardous substances on the screen, you can see four different pictures. The first picture, please mute your, turn off your, or turn off your audio. Turn off your audio, don't waste my time because the time is already very short today. So, on the screen you have seen uh, different uh, four different pictures of different types of hazardous substances. First one contains the paints and oil. Second one, acid and alkali for the petrol. Fifth one is the uranium. Means the, in the first picture, the, uh, these are the flammable substances. 
acids in the second picture this is also uh, this is the corrosive substance Sec third picture again the uh, flammable substance fourth one is the radioactive substance now let's move to the next topic that is the laboratory apparatus what are the laboratory apparatus they these are the apparatus which helps us to carry out the experiment successfully in the laboratory this table is also being taken from your uh, book this is table number 1.3 it is on page number 9 and 10 acha one thing i want to uh, tell you that i have recently uh, before this class i have uploaded your home assignment number 3 in which you need to uh, draw the diagrams of few laboratory apparatus the names are uh, given in the assignment you need to draw only the uh, just a minute only the outlines okay fine not this one you will draw these these outlines of the laboratory apparatus right because uh, these outlines will show the correct proportion or the correct diagram this picture is taken these these pictures are taken from the apparatus directly they are not very clear however in the outline it's very clear so you should practice for the diagram on the loose sheet from these outlines right now we will learn about the laboratory apparatus one by one that what are they actually these are the tools required to complete lab work our first apparatus would be now first one is test tube at as it is shown in the picture and you must have seen the picture of test tube or uh, those who have elder brother and sister in class 9th and 10th they have seen they have seen the test tube with them they carry what is the test tube it is a tube containing or heating a small amount of substances a test tube is a glass tube with one end open and the other end closed the closed end is rounded test tubes are used to hold small samples means one end is closed and other end is open and the closed end is rounded and throughout the length of the tube it has the same uh width there is no difference in the width at the top at the open end or at the bottom end okay now next is next is the conical flask conical flask it is for just a minute it is for containing chemicals or collecting liquids it has a narrow neck the neck is narrow it is narrow from the neck area and wide from the bottom area and expands towards its its base this this region this allows easy mixing or swirling of flask without too much risk of spilling out it uh when we work with uh, conical flask it's very easy for us to shake or to uh, mix the chemicals because the uh, mouth is very narrow and it's easy for us to shake the uh, chemical inside it because there is no risk of spilling out right next is beaker so what is a beaker beaker is it is a common container in most labs it is used for mixing stirring and heating chemicals beakers come in a wide range of sizes there are different type different sizes of beakers are present in the chemical lab uh, this is for uh, 25 ml as well for uh, it is uh, as per the need of your uh, uh, need of your experiment that if you require a very small size of beaker or a large size of beaker uh, it is uh, it comes in different uh volume 
means uh, if you require very small amount of a chemical to heat or collect it uh, it is present uh, it, uh, it, we can use 25 ml of beaker or 10 ml as well or uh, then we uh, have large size of beaker and all uh, you can see this sign of measure measuring sign that uh, what is the volume you are taken this sign is present on all the beakers for your convenience next is next is filter funnel filter, filter funnel there are two pictures in this slide first one is the filter funnel filter, filter funnel it is for separating and insoluble this one it is for separating an insoluble solid from a liquid a lab funnel is just like any other funnel except that it is designed to be used in the lab laboratory setting they can be made up of plastic or glass and can have either a short stem this one this short stem or the long stem as per their as per the requirement as per as uh, as it is required by us there are several sizes that can be chosen from based on the amount of liquid that needs to go through them quickly um, we once we will resume the regular classes we will carry out uh, an experiment in which we will use test tube beaker and funnel uh, and conical uh, conical flask as well right uh, that experiment is called filtration that experiment is called fil filtration and we will carry out this experiment in uh, our uh, chapter from separating mixtures in this uh, in this term i pray that our uh, i pray that our uh, that all the situation from uh, pandemic is over and we will carry uh, we will uh, continue with our regular classes as soon as possible okay next is the tripod stand this tripod stand is a laboratory tripod and it is three legged as you can see it is three legged in this picture you can see it is three legged platform used to support flask and beakers tripods are usually made of stainless steel or aluminium and lightly built for portability within the lab so why it is used this is used for supporting the beaker or different types of flasks when we heat the chemicals in them and it is made up of mostly it is made up of steel or aluminium it is very lightly in weight and uh, it supports the uh, round bottom flasks conical flasks beakers as well right now next is next is next we can see measuring cylinder so measuring cylinder here on the screen screen you can see the diagram of the measuring cylinder and the diagram of an evaporating dish so what is the purpose of measuring cylinder it is used for measuring a volume of liquid to an accuracy of 1 cm cube you can see the measuring sign on it so that we can uh, we come to know that uh, what is the amount of uh, or what is the volume of liquid we have taken in it measuring cylinder is a common piece of laboratory equipment used to measure the volume of a liquid it has a narrow cylindrical shape you can see the shape of the cylinder that it is narrow cylindrical cylindrical means in the length wise it is all equal uh, from the top at the bottom entirely equal each marked line on the measuring cylinder represents the amount of liquid that has been measured as i have just told you that these signs show are showing the amount of liquid that we have taken next is the evaporating dish an evaporating dish is a piece of laboratory glassware means in the laboratory we can find it uh, to heat the solution to uh, so that the uh, substance can evaporate in the air and sometimes to heat them as well to bring them to a norm, uh, to uh, to their melting points right next is our bunsen burner bunsen burner 
uh, this diagram as it shows so uh, there is uh, there are the uh, so many um, atoms are labeled so many different parts are labeled bunsen burner uh, let me first explain what is it and why it is used bunsen burner it is used for heating the chemical uh, heating the chemical and it is named after the robert bunsen who first time invented it the bunsen burner is based on the principle of adjustable gas combustion with air supply here here you can see this rubber tubing it is used for gas supply so by varying the quantity of air supply different burner temperatures can be achieved because we use it for burning purpose for heating the chemicals we must be provided with the gas supply which is being provided to this bunsen burner through rubber tubing after the rubber tubing this is the base then heat proof mat this is the on which it is uh, kept is the heat proof mat just above the gas tubing is a air hole it should be kept open when we use it then the chimney this one is the chimney and the flame flame has two parts inner cone and the outer cone now let's see what they are showing in the next picture in the next picture they have shown us two different types of flame yellow flame and the blue flame when the air uh, air hole this is okay when the air hole is closed the flame that we get is yellow in color it has very less energy it is not for uh, this does not provide us with the best heating however the blue flame this is very good it uh, we get it when the air hole is open and uh, the gas supply is proper and it provides us with the complete combustion okay students so blue flame is much better than yellow flame uh, even in our homes when we use uh, uh, cooking ranges or a stove when we get yellow flame we do not uh, get the proper cooking of our food because the heating is not good however when we get the blue flame the heat, it provides us with the complete combustion so blue flame does not burn because uh, blue uh, sorry yellow flame uh, this uh, does not burn and it provides with very less amount of temperature or energy however this blue flame provides the highest temperature and complete combustion this one is called the luminous flame this one is called the non luminous flame so what is the difference between luminous and non luminous we will learn about it luminous flame don't burn as efficiently as non luminous one they do not produce as much energy this means that the non luminous flame have a lot more energy this one this blue one has a low lot more energy it is a non luminous one we can see through it clearly okay and the flames are actually hotter this is why the luminous one yellow the yellow one this is the luminous one and the blue one is the non luminous one the yellow flame commonly known as the safety flame this yellow one is luminous yellow flame is the luminous flame and it is also called the safety flame it is the coolest flame at almost 300 degrees centigrade it provides us with the 300 degrees centigrade temperature the blue flame can reach temperatures of approximately 500 degrees centigrade and it is almost invisible in a bright room it is a non luminous and is clear to see right so what we do what we do that if in the lab we are working with uh, or we are uh, using the uh, bunsen burner we should open the air hole so that there will be complete supply of lum non luminous flame that is the blue one so that we will achieve the highest amount of temperature that is 500 degree centigrade and non luminous flame will uh, is invisible so that we will see clearly through it and this yellow one is a luminous flame and we do not need it 
because it does not provide us with the good combustion as it only reaches up to 300 degrees centigrade of flame right class uh, next is you can see here in this video that blue flames uh, uh, in the lab the um, um, scientist is heating something on the non luminous flame you can see the non luminous flame is blue and we, it's clear and invisible we can see clearly through it it's a non luminous one and it provides the complete heating so that whatever the scientist or the person is heating it burns completely it completely it provides complete combustion right here is the uh, you can see this is the rubber tubing for gas supply here is the uh, air hole and this is the chimney and we are uh, getting the flame from the from here and uh, this is the base right same uh, like this we have a bunsen burner in our lab as well in the school when we will resume the normal classes i will bring the burner or uh, here in the class to show without the rubber tubing okay not with the gas supply for uh, the gas supply if we uh, if we will visit the lab we will see how it works okay so i hope that you have understood everything very well and now our time is getting over and uh, we will move to the next slide that is for conclusion of the chapter that what we have learned please turn off the turn off the audio beta umar farooq abdul rahman just a minute i have to uh, take your attendance as, as well just a minute class keep silence for a while i am going to take the attendance keep silence so that everyone will be marked in the attendance list so okay abbas husain anabia mahnoor just a minute okay so yes abbas husain anabia abdul rahman aiza salman ajwa muzaffar ariba nazim arisha hibal javed iman hasham javedia babar kashan shakil hamza farooq umar class 6g ayan that after ayan um ayan and shayan abid mahat kashif mahnoor sheikh मीरम वक़ार मीर अरहम मोहम्मद उमर फारूकी नायमा खान निदा फातमा रहमा आरिफ सासोल सना हफीज सना उल्ला शांति कुमारी उशना युसेरा ईमान शकील सुहेमा रफीक ओके क्लास सो नाउ लेट्स conclude the chapter that we what we have learned up till now that meaning and importance of science and technology misuse and limitation of technology contribution of scientists the scientific method of study general safety rules in the laboratory hazardous substances laboratory safe laboratory apparatus and their uses your home assignment i have uploaded it uh, just before the class so you can uh, just as soon as we uh, complete the session you will collect it from there okay all the instructions are being given there now i thank you for your time and uh, attention okay take care allah hafiz allah hafiz class and complete your homework on time so no on the loose sheet on the loose sheet we will we will do all the uh, diagram work on the loose sheet not on the copies okay allah hafiz